If you confidently share your plan, they will be reassured that they are in good hands. Hello, and welcome back to the Blissful Mompreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Hall, and I am so grateful you are here today. In 2019 and 2022, I baby-proofed my small business to not only run without me, but to thrive without me so that I could take two four-month maternity leaves to be with my babies. And now I'm on a mission to help you do the same. On today's episode, I will share how I communicated my maternity leave to clients to both retain my clients and ensure a smooth transition into maternity leave. I'll share practical strategies from my own experience, including how to communicate effectively, find the right replacement, and manage the transition. Let's dive in. The best thing you can do to retain clients is communicate clearly and openly. Let your clients in on the excitement as soon as possible, which for most will be the start of the second trimester. If this is your first pregnancy, you have a little more time than someone who is in their subsequent pregnancies, but you will begin showing and your clients will be wondering about your plans. They may fear that you won't return after having the baby or perhaps that you will not be serving clients at all while on leave. You want to get ahead of that and share your plan with them to both reassure them and allow them to plan accordingly. Before you communicate your plan, make sure you have a plan. When do you intend to stop working? How long do you plan to take off? Are there any responsibilities you want to retain while you're on leave? If you haven't come up with your plan yet, I recommend listening to episode 17 all about what to consider when determining the length of your maternity leave. Now, how you communicate with your clients is entirely up to you. I made the announcement via email, and then when I saw them throughout the week, I reassured them in person that I was working on bringing on an amazing temporary replacement. I clearly shared when I intended to stop teaching and when I planned on returning. I tried to think of all the concerns they might have and address them in that email. I shared that whoever I brought in to teach for me would be fully briefed on everything we had been working on so that they can have a seamless experience. They trust you. That's why they chose to work with you. So if you confidently share your plan, they will be reassured that they are in good hands. Honestly, I was so nervous about sharing the news, but I found that most people were excited for me and respected my choice. Now, If there are any responsibilities you would like to continue during your maternity leave, you may want to communicate that to your clients. I told my students that if they had any questions or needed to get in touch with me while I was on leave to speak with the front desk and they would relay messages to me. I do recall one instance where I got on the phone with one of my students while I was on leave to address one of his concerns. Whatever you decide, be sure to set clear boundaries and communicate your intentions with your clients and team. It's always better to under-promise and over-deliver. That way you have the flexibility to do what you want. Now, you also have to determine how you want to handle new clients. Will you stop taking on new clients until you return for maternity leave? With my first maternity leave, I continued to take on new clients until I started my leave, but I was transparent with any leads that contacted me. That way, they could decide if they were comfortable starting lessons knowing that I'd be gone for several months. If you do want to continue to take on new clients, highlight the benefits of them signing on and working with you before your leave. This will help frame it in a positive light and encourage those that are on the fence to sign up. You may worry that this will make you sound too salesy, but as long as you're being honest and want to help people, it will come across as genuine. Now, let's discuss how to find a replacement. This was definitely the most challenging part, as I wanted a teacher who had a similar teaching style. For my first maternity leave, I had a teacher on staff who was perfect, and she stepped in. There were a few weeks that she could not cover for me, so... For those weeks, I had to hire someone new. I used my hiring funnel and found someone who was wonderful. 
If you are new to hiring, I recommend listening to episodes 13, 14, and 15, where I break down my hiring funnel that I have revised and perfected over the years. For my second maternity leave, I wanted to do personal reach outs to find a perfect fit. At that point, I felt like I had become an even stronger teacher and I really wanted the best of the best to step in for me. I went through my Facebook friends and wrote a list of people I wanted to ask and I organized them into my top choices and started reaching out. It took a while. One of my former students, who is an incredible singer and teacher, agreed to step in. She was amazing and my students absolutely loved working with her. She ended up continuing to teach with us after my maternity leave and has been an amazing addition to our team. If you have people already on your team that would be a great replacement, I would start there first. If that doesn't work, you could try reaching out to friends and colleagues or you can interview and hire someone new. Once I had a replacement, I notified my clients and shared information about her background and experience. And once again, I reassured them that The replacement would be fully briefed on everything that we had been working on for a smooth transition. Now, the transition period is crucial. I feel like I did this much better with my second pregnancy. I had my replacement observe me for the three weeks leading up to my maternity leave. This was great for several reasons. One, if I happened to go into labor early, then I had a sub ready to go. Two, The students got to meet their new teacher for several weeks while I was still there. Three, Jennifer, my replacement, got to know each student, saw how I adapted my teaching style to meet their needs, and knew precisely what we were working on. My students that were around for both maternity leaves mentioned how much they enjoyed working with Jennifer. I do think part of it was that I brought on such an amazing teacher, but I also think the way I handled the transition aided in my students feeling so comfortable with her. This model may not work for your business, but I definitely think that for most businesses, having the replacement at least shadow you for a few days while you work alongside them can make for a smooth transition that also helps retain your clients. In the weeks leading up to my leave, I gathered all materials, for me, that's sheet music, into a Google Drive that I shared with my replacement. I also included a description of each student, although she knew so much about each student from observing me for several weeks that it was probably unnecessary. Make sure you think through what your replacement will need and gather all of those materials. So there you have it. In summary, preparing for maternity leave requires thoughtful planning and clear communication. By being upfront with your clients, carefully selecting a replacement, and managing the transition period effectively, you can maintain client trust and keep your business running smoothly. Remember, the key is to address potential concerns early, set clear boundaries, and ensure your clients feel valued and reassured. If you approach this process with a solid plan and transparent communication, you'll be well on your way to a successful maternity leave without compromising your business. If you have any questions or comments about today's episode or anything else related to preparing for maternity leave, I'd love to hear from you. Drop me a DM on Instagram at the blissful mompreneur. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell, and leave a comment below letting me know your biggest takeaway. Your feedback helps me continue to provide valuable content to mompreneurs like you. Until next time, keep pursuing your dreams, finding joy in the journey, and creating a life and business you love. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.